Welcome back to Brutal Mode EX, the mod that makes Plants vs Zombies much more difficult. In this series, we attempt to beat the hardest levels in PvZ history, and you are currently watching part 10 of the series. In the last video, we completed all but two minigames in the normal minigames page, and I strongly recommend you watch the previous parts first, as most things are changed from the original game in Brutal Mode EX. Today, we are making a start on the Limbo Page minigames. For those unaware, the Limbo Page is a page of minigames usually hidden from players in the vanilla version of PvZ. They are usually only accessible via cheats, but are all completely payable levels of objectives. In Brutal Mode EX, the page is made unhidden, and even most of these minigames are changed to be very challenging. And today, I'm introducing to you a level that will be even more challenging than Zambotany 1, which took an even longer time to beat. The first level is Art Challenge Walnut. It's like seeing stars, but instead of placing star fruits to draw a star fruit, you plant walnuts to draw a walnut. The objective sounds really simple, but then I realized you need to plant walnuts on the 8th column, and there are torchlight zombies this level. So, we're gonna have to find a way to make sure the torchlights don't even move more than one tile after they spawn. This will be interesting. Instead of trying to rush to victory, playing the long game is better. Planting walnuts as fast as possible is a bad idea when a single torchlight zombie spawns and ruins your walnuts. Instead, we can plant Gatling Piece to set up a defense so strong that will hold off the zombies from advancing more than a single tile later on. Of course, we had to bring out the combo that I'm just gonna call the trifecta from now on. The Free Peter Gatling Cattail combo. This combo is so good it beats literally every zombie. Same strategy as Zombotany 1 and Zombie Nimble Zombie Quick again. Two cattails early game for everything, the game froze at you, then two free peters and a third cattail, and then repeaters all rows. Then we upgrade to gatling peas on the rows next to the side rows and start building up our walnuts. This strategy is absolutely foolproof and worked marvelously again, allowing us to beat the fruit level first try. Next level is sunny day. In sunny day, sun from the sky is worth double, so we can get more expensive plants much quicker. I mean, the trifecta has to work here too, right? It sure does! We just don't need cattails anymore thanks to the extra sun we get from the sky. With extra sun to work with, you can't just plant a free peter straight away, so that will suffice for the early game. As for the other plants, we want Manishroom here to counter the cherry bomb gargantuars as well as bigger zombies. Lantern is another must bring here to counter the ghost jack in the box zombies, plus it's a superb solving option too. We also want Umbrella Leaves to deal with catapult zombies for cheap and great if Buster is necessary against great fed zombies. Pretty self-explanatory strategy, again, we want to plant two free peters for the early game, repeaters in all rows, you get it. Something more important is that you need a lot of mana shrooms this level, to get rid of all the jack-in-the-boxes from cherry bomb gargantuars. If you miss even just one jack-in-the-box zombie, the results could be detrimental depending on where it lands. My last plant was pumpkin, but honestly, it's unnecessary and we don't need to reduce the recharge on our Gatling Peas to get enough of them. With Gatling Peas spam, that is another level easily beaten. Now if the previous two levels beaten so easily, where's the challenge? The next level is not quite as easy. Introducing to you, we have Unsotted. In Unsotted, we can only plant in the three middle rows, but zombies come from all five rows. This means we need to defend against zombies using plants that can deal with zombies not in their own rows. The main problem this level is there are pea shooter screen door zombies. This level could be a walk in the park if it weren't for them. They completely disable us from using cattails, since cattails still pierce through screen doors. Without using cattail, we're going to need some other options that can counter screen door zombies while not being in the same row as them. Cabbage bolts are also no longer effective with basic and conehead zombies in play. So now we're playing some botany one, with literally three rows to plant on, and also torch to deal with, and no cattail. Usually, you at least have a chance to plant some flowers since you have a flexibility of 5 rows versus a 4 basic equivalent on wave 1, so you have a decent chance at zombies not spotting in your sunflower row. This level, however, all 4 basic equivalent is crammed into 3 rows on wave 1. This means you basically have a minuscule chance of having your sunflowers safe in a row that won't be attacked by the zombies. What's worse is basically one pea shooter screen door zombies transforms the entire horde of attackers into pea shooter heads. That makes setting up any sun production nearly impossible this level. As you can see, pea shooter zombies in all three rows. How are you supposed to plant anything? So don't mind this compilation of me trying to figure out how to deal with just the zombies before the first flag for literally 40 minutes straight. And the level has four flags. Before you tell me Gloomship works, it does not, because they miserably die to torchlight zombies and also get countered by Jack in the Box zombies.
Eventually, I found Starfruit Spam works well enough to get us past the early game, thanks to their piercing damage allowing us to deal with the masses. Unfortunately, it is a completely ineffective as soon as target zombies spawn, since their bungee ambush spawns zombies in the middle of the lawn. Starfruits don't do enough damage to kill the zombies quick enough if they start from the middle, so the strategy was a complete bust once I realized that problem. Gatling Peas, as good as they are, are not good enough for this level as a main source of firepower. They don't work like free peters as they only see zombies in their own rows. This means it won't shoot unless there's zombies in its own row, so its secondary attack is never guaranteed to kill all the zombies in the side rows. Because of this, zombies on the side rows can just walk to the house as long as they overwhelm our Gatling Peas secondary attack. We've been left with one choice, that is Cop Cannon. There was no way instant use plant spamming would kill all the zombies as it was a 4 flag level. Cop Cannon was our only choice to use and eliminate all the zombies on the side rows as it seems, as we've exhausted all the other ways to attack all the side rows. There was a huge problem with Cop Cannons. Literally, how does one afford Cop Cannons in a level like this where you only have 3 rows to plant some flowers in? Well, it was certainly a challenge to find plants that could both defend and be cost efficient enough to help us defend and afford these big fellas. I first came up with choppers and tall nuts as good protection plants. Choppers would knock back zombies while tall nuts will stall for time during choppers downtime. Unfortunately, choppers were very underwhelming once the first leg hit, which is when the jack in the box zombies start flooding in and blowing them up. The deadly jack in the box zombies combined with torchlight zombies make choppers not such a desirable option. At this point, we're 4 hours into the stream, so I decided to call it quits that day on Unsodded. In the next stream, Winter Melons come to mind as a solution. Winter Melons are good here to ensure that more zombies stack up together for more efficient cop cannons. Plus, they are pretty decent on their own against Torchlight zombies and also do a fairly good job against pea shooter zombies. To defend the early game, we just put a melon pole in the same row as our sunflowers alongside a wall plant like a walnut or umbrella leaf to slow down zombies. Walnut is not good for my experience since they recharge too slowly for us to replenish the lawn with them fast enough against pea shooter zombies. To defend the other rows, we sacrifice our other lawnmowers. It is best to do that to open up safe lanes for us to plant more sunflowers in. Zombies don't spawn in rows lawnmowers were just activated in, so just using lawnmowers as one time defense is good for us to get more sun for the future. We then upgrade our melon pole to a winter melon, allowing us to defend off pretty much everything in that row from there on out. With that, we will have enough sun to plant defenses in other rows, allowing us to reach the first flag with relative reliability. I say relative reliability because this strategy fails if a torchlight zombie spawns in the row of sunflowers before we can upgrade to winter melon. One melon pole is not enough to stop a torchlight zombie from crushing our sunflowers, so that's the scenario where we would need to restart the attempt. If all things go well, then we can easily survive the early game with this strategy. We can then plant winter melons to cover the free plantable rows, we then sacrifice the lawnmowers on the side rows and start setting up pop cannons. All of this goes to plan most of the time, however, the challenge lies within after the first flag hits. Why? Well, part of the reason is because this level has dancing zombies and we have to deal with them using cop cannons. Every cop cannon shot has to be extremely precise, as just missing even one zombie can mean certain death when you need to spend a whole other instant use on that missed zombie. When we use up all our cop cannon shots, any angry dancer that comes will be certain death for us, making this level very challenging. There is nothing we can do in that scenario other than just look at it, walk through all our plants and straight to the house, and just pray next time our luck is less terrible. This process of trying to get top cannons, diving dancing zombies, repeats on and on like a bad dream happening again and again. Now if you somehow survive the dancing zombies, I bet you're going to slip up against the jack in the box zombies. These guys can come straight at your defensive plants and then blow them up, demolishing a wall like a wall breaker and let the pea shooter zombies start blasting you down. Once your walls get blown up, you also lose since you won't have enough time to replant free wall plants. If all those things don't fail you, you're probably not going to have enough cop cannons anyways. You need so many of them to defend off everything this level. Even if a torchlight zombie only crushes a few sunflowers, that probably makes you lose quite a lot of sun production and sets you back in progress for planting cop cannons which that will lead to your inevitable death against the horde of zombies on the side rows. All these reasons combined is the reason why. This, in fact, is the hardest level in PvZ history, replacing Zombotany 1 as truly the most challenging, taking me 10 hours to beat.
With so many attempts of trying to beat this level across 3 streams and 10 hours of trying to beat this level, winning with this strategy seemed hopeless. I scrambled to look for another plan to add to my arsenal that could prove to be something that is more effective than our current strategy. So I sat down and looked at all my available options. Well, there's just a few plans that I haven't considered using to beat this level, including this one. Imitator might seem pretty useless since it just takes up another seed slot for the same plant, leading to less diversity and flexibility in our strategy. However, one plant in particular benefits from being imitated and placed over and over again. That plant is Plantern. Plantern shrinks zombies and when you Plantern a shrunk zombie, it gets shrunk again, and you can infinitely stack its slow effect. Stacking slow effects means we can make zombies move even slower than we were only using Winter Melons, clumping zombies together even more. However, to use this, we need two seed slots, but we can just replace Winter Melons, obviously, since Plantern is a better slow effect. And we can replace Puff Shroom, since we can use Grave Buster on already used Planterns for extra sun as well. So it fits quite nicely into our 10 available slots. I tried again and again using Imitator Plantern slot it into our Cop Cannon Melon Pool strategy. It just would not work because Pea Shooter zombies were too plentiful. Plantern made zombies move slower but not shoot slower. So eventually, we still fell harder and harder to the opposing Zabotany piece. The same strategy just keeps failing on me. So, I decided to brainstorm. What would be a better way to use Imitator Planter to beat this level? Well, first, I went back to Starfruits since they couldn't kill zombies fast enough if they started from the middle of the lawn. What if I slowed those zombies down? Well, it worked for a bit. It now doesn't die to target zombies, but the bigger problem being how it was supposed to live against Jack in the Box zombies and Pea Shooter zombies. So, back to the drawing board. Then, of course, I went back to Gatling P, our good old reliable friend. So, if we use Gatling P, that would kill everything on the middle lanes guaranteed. With the addition of Imitator Plantern, we just stall out any zombies Gatling P's couldn't kill on the side rows. Bingo. We just needed to stall out the zombies on the side rows that were not killed by the Gatling P, and then use our cherry bombs and jalapenos on them. First try worked absolutely amazing. Gatling P's absolutely shredded everything only another problem propped up. That's the fact that Cherry Bob and Jalapeno are not enough to kill whatever's left on the side rows after their third flag where zombie density is incredibly high. So I guess the strategy doesn't work. However, there is indeed another plan that would make this work. Zombie density is a problem for Cherry Bomb and Jalapenos? Well, luckily, we have another plant that exists which solves this problem while doing a pretty similar job to Cherry Bomb and Jalapeno. Say hello to Doom Shroom. Gatling P as a stalling plant will kill the faster zombies. The Torchlight zombies and Jack in the Box zombies will meet their demise to the Gatling P's as well as any angry dancers. Then, Doom Shroom can take care of the rest that's remaining, since the other zombies will be slow enough with multiple plantain slows stacked to not reach the house within 50 seconds. And guess what? That's the strategy we just needed the most, to beat this extreme pain in the head of a level for us. With many Gravehead zombies spawning throughout the level, so how do we beat the final wave mass grave spots? Glad you asked. If only we didn't also just do Doom Shroom to eliminate everything on the final wave. Grave spawns who? We just drop one nuclear bomb to wipe everything off existence. And there we go. This treacherous journey is finally over and we have finally overcome the most challenging level in Brutal Mode EX. At least, I think it's the most challenging. Surely, it doesn't get even more challenging than this. Um, hopefully, I should say. With Unsodded out of the way, after 10 hours of attempts, we have reached the end of this video. Next time, we will do more Limbo Page minigames and see if the levels are truly as hard as they stand to be. If you'd made it this far into the video, I'm sure you enjoyed watching it for sure, so why not subscribe if you haven't already, and like the video. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with more Brutal Mode EX.